Hello you absolute legends, welcome back to the channel on what is quite a, a clear um, but frosty and cold December morning here in Lincolnshire. It's John back with another one for the channel for you then. This is one from the collection, it's one I've had a little while, in fact I've had it just over a year now. Um, it's a Fiat Doblo, it's a Fiat Doblo cargo van. It's the short wheelbase, and it's the last of the 225 series, if you want to know the model number. 59 plate then, uh, and it is in this fetching red colour. Uh, the colour code is Royal Mail Postal Red, and we'll have a look at uh, that in just a moment, because the question that many people will ask is, hang on a minute, John, is that a Royal Mail van? And the answer is, well, it was at one point. Um, it's quite an interesting uh, story, in my opinion, um, in that it did, it started its life out as a Royal Mail van. And there's evidence of that in the van that we can look at. Um, it was then sold to a company who um, used it for dog transportation. And it was fitted with cages in the back um, and had uh, dog transportation there. It then came to a friend of mine who had a uh, dog grooming business locally and uh, he last year um, decided that they didn't need it anymore and it was sold to me for a whopping price uh, of £250 uh, with no MOT, it needed work and uh, we can talk about the work that we've done later on in the video. So it's just been for its yearly MOT, uh, 2022, um, December, and it's just passed with no advisories, which is good news. Now the van isn't perfect, um, it has had a life, and I'm sure you can imagine that those who uh, treat these cars as a uh, business commodity, those at the Royal Mail maybe, um, those who are using it for uh, their dog business, it, it is what it is, it's a tool, isn't it? It's not a show car, and so it's got a few battle scars, some that I've done myself by being a bit of a wally, and uh, some that it came with when I bought the van. And of course, you will not fail to notice that there are some interesting decals on the side. And it is, it's called My Snail Van, and it's a little bit of fun. So we'll take a look at um, the van today in the video. We'll have a chat about what it actually is, uh, and my personal opinion of it. We'll talk about its history of um, its life with the Royal Mail and its life with my friend as a dog van um, and its life uh, now um, with, with, with me as a commodity. So, uh, what is it? It's a Fiat Doblo. Uh, it's a Doblo van. It's the cargo model. It's got the 1.2 uh, multi-jet diesel engine inside, which has covered just over 130,000 miles in its life. Uh, it's a two-seater, there are two seats in the car, uh, or the van, um, and it's classed as a uh, little van for um, taxation purposes. Um, it's quite cheap to insure, um, it costs me just over £150 a year, and yes, before you ask, uh, the stickers are declared to the insurance company, they have to be, because they're classed as a modification. Um, but they are declared and they, they didn't put um, any uh, insurance uh, money on my insurance premium. The joys of living in Lincolnshire, we've got tractors and diggers and all sorts coming past this morning. So let's take a look at it and have a quick chat about the van. So when I got the van, um, it was in a bit of a sorry state. My friend hadn't neglected it, but it had been sat uh, unloved for about a year. It was green, it was dirty, um, it needed the wheels refurbing, uh, it needed brakes, it needed tyres, and the inside, well, as you can imagine, it had been used for dogs, and there were dog cages in the back, um, and under the dog cage mats and bits and pieces like that, there was a lot of fluff. Uh, dirt, mud, so we've had to take all that and have a look. Um, it's wearing a few battle scars then, as I say. At some point in its life it's had a, a brand new wing on here. Um, you can see that, you can evidence that when you actually look at uh, the vehicle. But the paintwork is nice and shiny now, it's come up okay. There are a few issues with lack of peel here. And in fact that's getting a lot worse on the bonnet and the roof, well, the roof line it's terrible, but we can look at that uh, when we go around the car. So, uh, it's been knocked on this front bumper here, and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, no amount of tea cut in the world is going to get that out. Um, I'm filthy as well, sorry, I've been taking things out the van to do this video. Um, 
it is what it is, isn't it? Um, ultimately, quite straight, this panel. No major knocks, dings or dents. Um, we've got a cap missing here uh, from the window... Uh, I don't know what you'd call this, a wing mirror, wing mirror cover. And that flew off on the A16 on the way to work one morning. Um, we've got a little bit of surface. I want to say rust, but it's not rust. It's um, it's just bubbled. Uh, it's bubbled between the paint and the sill. But actually, the sill's under here. Lovely. Quite, uh, quite nice, considering it's been uh, bashed about and treated a bit like a workhorse most of its life. Um... This door then, obviously we've got the, the snail logo. You might be asking why we've got the logos. We'll talk about that in just a moment. We've got a little bit of a mark on this door here, and this door has been crunched at the bottom. Um, but this panel at the back, looking good. There's a few dings and dents here. Uh, it's because the load bay inside isn't protected. People have put stuff in there, it's gone whack. Uh, and it's obviously uh, just uh, dented that there. The runners, all good. Back bumper all good as well coming along to the back uh, again a few knocks and dings and dents and this that and the other and you can see here uh, probably evidence as to why there is the Royal Mail or Royal Snail stickers on the van again we'll talk about that in just a moment uh, we'll look at the load bays in a while uh, we have a Fletner uh, vent on the top here. The flat vent uh, is the spinny things you see on people's vans and cars and bits and pieces. Um, it's there to let air in and I had to replace that because uh, the previous owner went through a car wash with it on and it ripped it to pieces. This side again then, same issue with the paint. We can just see it here. It is starting to fade but it, again it's the reasoning behind the snail logo here. Uh, sills this side much better than the uh, others they've been done at some point in its life this side uh, and the stuff you can see on the bottom of the door there is just mud and general bits and pieces from when I've uh, been driving the van I have a security sticker here uh, warning this shed is alarmed uh, a little bit of fun there all uh, right let's go through to the front here and look at the bonnet from this side the lights uh, have done that usual hazing. I protect them every now and again. I give them a good old clean and then the, uh, and then the lights come back. But um, it's, it's a never ending battle, isn't it? Uh, foggy headlights and you can just see it's starting to go at the top here. Right, let's take a look inside then. We'll start with the passenger side, which is what we normally do. We will start with uh, looking on this side. As I say, it's only a two, two uh, Two passenger entry door and it is a two seater cab so taking a look at the door card here it's like this plasticky stuff um, it's no frills it really isn't but it's a lovely drive and I can quite happily cover quite a few miles in this um, so nothing really on the door card here aside from a handle and a, and a door handle we've got a speaker here in the dash we've got a vent here and obviously the standard Vauxhall Vivaro Renault uh, Fiat blowers here you know the ones uh, that are multi-angled we've obviously got uh, an airbag here little cubby hole to put your stuff in and quite a big glove box um, and here you've got the option to turn your passenger airbag on or off depending on what cargo you are obviously carrying um, looking ahead to the center console then uh, we've got a Blaupunkt CD stereo that is a standard uh, which works very well as long as you don't turn it over 30 if you do turn it over 30 then it blows uh, and sounds terrible uh, fog lamps window uh, switches here again more of these uh, dash sort of vent pods and a manual um, normal dash control system we've got two 12 volt adapters here uh, you've got this one and you've got this one which has got your cigarette lighter as well and it has been used um, but not much uh, at some point in its life and we've got the gear uh, changer gear surround it's just starting to go on the gear gator surround there but not too bad um, passenger seat again this is treated a bit like a workhorse by me and mrs john coopland and um, so it's not the cleanest of things in the world uh, you've obviously got positionable seats headrests your seat belt um, and on your driver's side here you've got a pull down armrest bulkhead then at some point has had 
a cutout. Um, so these bulkheads, you can have glass fitted, you can have them standard with this sort of cloth um, and, a, and a clear bulkhead, um, or you can take the bulkhead out entirely. At some point in his life, as I say, somebody has taken this um, piece of the bulkhead out, um, probably uh, when it was uh, being converted for the dogs, um, just to let a bit more air in there as well. Um, above here, we've got a little cubby hole at the top, there it is you can put your stuff in there uh, there's just bits and pieces in there and obviously you pull down mirrors as well the only addition that this has got that is aftermarket and um, is a parrot uh, not the pieces of eight parrot but the hands-free kit and there is the microphone you can just see that for the parrot kit it works very well um, and it's actually quite a nice little feature we have twin sliding doors uh, either side which is quite a nice feature sometimes they're, they're blanked off um, and quite a big load space actually it's it's got trash in here uh, penguin wrappers I can only apologize in fact let's do the joke what is the joke on the penguin why are penguins shops so busy because hang on a minute because the fish fill it <laughs> yeah I should probably put that in the bit um, I have uh, attached a box, one of these plastic cargo boxes, um, to the back. Uh, it is screwed into the floor. Uh, it's wet at the moment because I've just had a hot tub in here. But it's screwed into the floor with self-tapping um, screws. In fact, I'm going to get the hoover out in just a moment and vax that out because that is terrible. Um, that's really useful for when we go shopping. Uh, we just stick the shopping in there and... Uh, and away we go. Um, it's always good to have a builder's bag because you never know when you're going to need one. So I always keep a builder's bag in the van. Uh, and obviously we've got a carpet load bay here as well. And some bags and bits and pieces. Um, there's some fun and games on the back door. Uh, I've got some stickers. Um, the vehicle wasn't insure, uh, seized by the police for no insurance. I was given that by a friend from the motor insurance database. And there's a few other police related stickers in there. Um, we've got a uh i don't know what you would call it plywood cut out here and there um to protect these back panels that we talked about earlier and um, they've clearly been put in after somebody's bashed one um it is my intention to put some here and on this door as well and on the back doors at some point um just to protect it uh, and, and you can get one for the floor as well but i don't really really need it i don't put heavy tools or anything in there all the time so that is the load bay um, from this side. Let's go round and open up the rear doors. So we've got like a twin barn door here. We've got the big door and they don't, uh, they open sort of to this angle, sort of a 90 degree, but then you can also push them all the way back, opening 180 degrees um, to be able to get wider loads in, I suppose. And then you've obviously you've got a little door here, the same 45 degrees, 90 degrees. And you can get into the van and load in lots and lots and lots of goodies, whatever you're putting in the van. Um, and under this carpet, it's just a, again a standard uh, plasticky floor which protects the floor. Um, this is a good old Hoover out. I can only apologise. And the Fletner, for people that are interested, uh, just comes through the uh, roof of the van, and you can turn it so it's on and off. Um, but when it's spinning. Um, it's quite quiet, but you can always tell if it's windy out because if the flatness is spinning, it's quite windy. We shall leave them doors open, actually, for the rest of the video. Get some air in, maybe evaporate some of that water. Again, this side, the sliding door opens up, so you've got the ability to come in from all angles. You can have, if you're moving in something really difficult, you can have people either side, two at the back, two either side or whatever, just helping something in. Looking into then the driver's side, uh, we've got multi positional seating, which is very good. Uh, it's a good driving position for me. I'm six foot three and 21 stone, I'm quite a big guy, um, but it's quite uh, a roomy little van. The only thing I would say is this bulkhead sometimes gets in the way. It would be nice to have the ability um, to pop the bulkhead in and out or even fold it down, that would be quite useful. So we can then put the passenger seat forward um, and put longer loads in because at the moment I can only get something in uh, laid flat to about 1.7 meters and if I'm buying wood or bits and pieces that's 2.4 meters it has to be jacked up at the back and go through the hole in the bulkhead and it's a bit of a nuisance and can be unsafe if you're going long distances 
Um, looking then at the driver's side, as we say, we've got the same sort of thing. We've got a fold down um, visor here. Um, I've obviously got a clippy clip for my sat nav. Um, same on the door cards, nothing exciting on there. All your electric windows are controlled from the center here. Uh, wipers, light stalk, and then you can adjust your uh, headlight aim up and down and obviously your menu for your clock and stuff. The only downside from doing such a heavy life is the plastic on the steering wheel has started to deteriorate a little bit. You can get covers for those. Um, it is something I'm looking into, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. I'm not needing one of those yet. Let's turn the key in the ignition then. Just have to give that a bit of a wiggle uh, because I can't get the... <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the steering lock off. Uh, we'll come back. Yeah, so trying to do the steering lock um, one-handed was difficult. Uh, 130,680 miles. Obviously, we've got some warning lights on there. I need some diesel uh, because it is a diesel engine. Um, and uh, the warning lights will start to go out when we start the, um, the engine up. Take the key out for now. We'll pop the engine. We'll have a quick look under the engine bay. Uh, start the engine and that will be the end of the video uh, while i'm walking around here now is a good time to say to you if you are a fan of the channel if you're enjoying the video um it would be good to get a like and subscribe if you could um and comment down below what do you what do you reckon to the snail van would you have one have you got a van is it useful and um, i think this is blooming useful right we'll pop the bonnet and there we are uh, we've got the bonnet open and we can have a quick look under here it's quite nice and tidy under here there's no major issues and um, the strut top mounts looking good it's a bit dirty under there but again this is not a concourse winning van uh, it's an everyday van that i use to just bomb about the town in pick stuff up in um, and often go to work actually because it's quite a nice drive um we've got the coolant reservoir we've got the power steering fluid uh, brake servos bits and pieces like that brake fluid um, I have had to put a new battery on it at some point um, in the past 12 months. And here it is, the 1. Point, well, it's a 1.2 um, multi-jet engine. Uh, it's a 12899, so 1.3, 1.2. Uh, either which way, the one you want to look at it. Um, and the colour code then, just to, just to clarify, is the Rosso Poste Inglese. So that's red, English, post. Um... We'll start the engine, we'll have a listen to it. Um, it is a diesel engine, dirty old diesel. Very, very economic. Um, from a tank, which is about, uh, I don't know, 100 pounds, maybe, at the moment in today's current climate, um, I will probably get seven to 800 miles out of the tank. Now to me, that is very, very economic. There it is, the multi-jet engine ticking away. No major knocks or bangs. And like I said, it has had um, a, a, bit, a big service. When I last uh, took it for an MOT, it had four new tyres. It had brakes all round. Um, it had oil and filter. Uh, it had belts. It had the whole shebang done back uh, about a year ago. And there it is, the Royal Snail Fan. <laughs> Um, again, people asking why the Royal Snail, and let's just uh, bottom that out at the end of the video. Uh, because it was a Royal Mail van, um, it had, had previously got Royal Mail stickers on it. Um, I tried everything to get the paint fade out from where the previous stickers were, um, and I just couldn't do it. I could not get that paint to match um, underneath it. I think the lacquer had been damaged, or the, or the paint underneath had got moisture in it. I tried everything, um, so in the end I thought, sod that, I'm going to just put something that looks like a Royal Mail sticker over the top of what is etched into the paint, and I think it's uh, come out quite well and it certainly turns heads. The good people at Royal Mail, um, who I've spoken to, um, management and uh, their, the people I needed to speak to have been, uh, been okay with me doing that. That's it then from the video. Thank you very much. If you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and want to see more content like this, please give me a subscribe. Uh, let me know, would you uh, bomb around in this? Uh, the Royal Mail van, the Royal Snail van, or would you take the stickers off and just have it as a rough and ready van? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time then, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and now I'm on the TikToks as well. It's all John Coupland. 
uh, all one word, that's J-O-N-C-O-U-P-L-A-N-D. Until next time, have a great day, take care and goodbye.